Last year alone, 1,004 rhinos were killed in this country, meaning one rhino in every nine hours was being poached. The scourge is being fueled by demand for horn in Asia. Here in Zulu Water Game Reserve Park, outside this court, north of KwaZulu Natal, owners of the park are not taking any chances with their animals. They have employed the help of Rhino Rescue Project to infuse their rhino horns with poison and dye. We've decided to, to uh, poison all our rhino's horns just to make them ineffective in the market as such, uh, decrease the value of them. Um, you know, a number of the reserves in our vicinity have been hit quite hard. Um, so, you know, l luckily we haven't had any, anything as such, but we're just taking steps. You know, a lot of the private reserves, we can't really afford to lose any rhino. We've got a very small number of rhino on the property. The infusing process involves two teams, one in the air, which tracks and dusts the animals. One on the ground that ensures it's immobilized in a safe plane where the infusion will be done. Once the rhino is down, the infusion begins with drilling of the horn to its core. Then the toxins are pumped in. We wanted to, to do something proactive to curb rhino poaching versus the many reactive measures that are only actually valuable once an animal has died. So for us, um, a logical way to do this was to remove the value from the horn by contaminating it so the end user gets no medicinal or perceived medicinal value from it, nor can they use it for ornamental purposes. The infusion device soaks a rhino's horn under high pressure. Unlike other horns, rhino horns do not have a bony core, but consist entirely of keratin. These rubbery fibers are bundled up like very tightly pressed hair, and they form a very tough horn. Thanks to this fibrous anatomy, they can be soaked with the dye from the inside without it being noticeable from the outside. The process takes about 20 minutes. The results of this method where it has been tried, has been relatively successful. We've had unbelievable uh, results with, uh, with horn devaluation techniques like this. I think it's actually exceeded even our expectations. Um, of course, it's essential that uh, local communities and people on the ground and staff members are informed of what you're doing. That's almost as important as the actual procedures themselves. This kind of method is still in its research state. During the infusion process, the vets use the opportunity to collect DNA information of the rhino. They also emplace microchips into the horns, giving the animal an identity, making it easy to track it even when poached. When we first developed uh, the horn infusion technique, it was really a way to see whether we could uh, treat animals in captivity against ectoparasiticides, so ticks and so on, that, that would be on their skin. Um, and it, four years ago, kind of evolved into an anti-poaching technique. So we're very much still in our initial research phase. Um, we need to wait for an entire horn growth cycle to, to elapse before we'll be able to give um, concrete data, which is roughly four years. The Azenve located in Wildlife is the first state body to use this method in two of their national parks. And since rhino horn treatment was done in these parks, no poaching incidents have been reported. Judging by these results, this method could be the most effective way at the moment to stop possible extinction of our beloved rhinos. Sbuchela for Morning Live in Escort. Right now, one province that has uh, used that rhino horn treatment, as we just saw in the insert, is KwaZulu-Natal. The province has around 3,500 white rhino and about 500 black rhinos. It's lost 85 rhinos uh, back in 2013 and has made 63 arrests. Last year, Ezenvelo KZN Wildlife took the step of being the first state conservation agency to inject a chemical cocktail into the horns of several rhinos in an effort to contaminate an illegal black market wildlife product. Now, this bold move, which is being used in other reserves, is proving to be quite successful in combating rhino poaching. Well, to tell us more about this, we are joined from our Durban studios by Bandile Mkise, the CEO of uh, Esmvelo KZN Wildlife. It's good to have you, Bandila. Thank you very much for talking to us here on Morning Live. Good morning, Leanne, and good morning to the viewers. All right, let's, let's talk about, uh, obviously, I think the insert really did uh, talk about why it's important for South Africa to use it, I mean, with a high rate of poaching, so we understand why we're using it. How effective is it, though? That's, that's I suppose, the question to ask. Uh, I'm glad to say that <coughs> this is very effective. 
In actual fact, we, we took a chance as a state-owned agency uh, to try and see if this method would work. And uh, I'm happy to say that the results are there for everybody to see. We started using this method in September last year at Ndumo and Dembe Elephant, Dembe Elephant Park. And we are happy to say that since this method was implemented last year, we haven't lost a single rhino in both of those reserves. And as a provincial agency that has been given the responsibility to protect these animals, we are very happy because we firmly believe that preventative measures are the best way to, pre to protect the rhinos. Mm. Let's talk cost. What, what does it actually cost to insert this or inject one rhino? And, and how many rhinos have been injected so far? Uh, the cost of injecting one rhino is around 8,000 rand. You've got to take into consideration the fact that you need people on the ground and you need the use of a helicopter. So far, we've injected 28 rhinos in Tembe Elephant Park, and we are very happy about the operation. And we are going to continue and inject even more rhinos because we believe that the devaluation of the horn is the only way through which we can prevent the sale of the horn. Because if you buy the horn and it doesn't have any value, then you are wasting your money. So there's no effect whatsoever on the rhino? There is absolutely no effect on the, on the rhino. Okay. That has been tested. And I must also hasten to say that we are continuing to do even more tests. And we are doing more research to ensure that at the end of the day, we perfect this method. Yeah. Let, let's talk about what actually happens to, to a human if they do in any form consume uh, the, the rhino horn that is injected with this chemical. What happens? Well, Leanne, uh, the answer is simple. When you ingest something that is poisonous, something is, is definitely going to happen to you. So, the substance that is injected into the rhino horn is poisonous. So if you ingest poison, then you are bound to get sick. All right. Well, that sounds, it sounds like, a, like a great, great idea. I mean, I think one thing we need to tell viewers as well, and some people might, might not know, is that the, the, uh, the, the Dutch lotteries and Swedish postcode lo lotteries have actually injected, uh, let me just have a look at the, the figure again here. It's 232.2 million rand grant to the Peace Parks Foundation to help the fight against rhino poaching. I, I know that uh, Esenvela was also going to, um, to benefit from this. Just very, very quickly, what do you plan on doing with some of these funds? As I indicated earlier on, Leanne, what we are going to do is to concentrate more on rhino infusion, rhino horn infusion. Okay. And over and above that, we want to use more of this money to educate the communities about the value of rhinos. And we are also going to use some of this money for intelligence purposes. Fantastic. Because if you don't have good intelligence, then it would be impossible for you to protect the rhinos. All right, Bandila, thank you for talking to us. Thank you for uh, telling us all about this, because I think that the more that's done, the better it is for the future of rhinos in this country. All right, that was uh, Bandila Mkiza, the CEO of Ezemvelo, KwaZulu-Natal for Wildlife.